Welcome back to Bracket Race. We're looking at the enticement of sinners here in Proverbs chapter 1, 10 through 19. And today's the application. So we want to think about this. Because we're talking about the enticement of sinners. He says, the father says to the son, My son, do not be enticed by the sinners. They're enticing you to do sin. They want you to throw in with them. They want you to join in with them. They want you to support. They want you to be a supporter of their sin. They want you to be that plus, right, to all their sins that they're doing. They want you to be that uh, alliance member. They want you to throw in with them. Even though you may not be doing what they're doing, they want you to be a part of what they're doing. The world and the devil are out there to entice you to sin, right? That's what they want you to do. They want you to say, hey, come on, just throw in with us. You don't have to actually do what we're doing. Just approve of what we're doing. That's exactly what sinners do. That's what the evil do. That's what Romans chapter 1 tells us, right? Not only do they do evil, but they approve of those who do it. We're called to be neither of those. We're called neither to support or, or approve or be the ones that are sinners. See, I have a problem with Christians who say, well, I don't do those things. But then they don't do anything about the evil that's in the world. They're like, ah, well, it doesn't really matter. Well, the world will do what the world does. Yeah, exactly. But we're called to, to shine light. We're called to expose the evil deeds of darkness. We're not doing that if we're hiding in our holes and um, you know pretending that we're okay and just letting the world go to hell in a handbasket. We can't do that. We're called to be salt and light of the world. If we don't have our saltiness, if we're not being the light set on the stand, if we're under the basket, then we're not good for anything, he says. You're not even good enough for the dung heap. So you got to be out there. You got to be working. You got to be changing. You know, however you do that. And um, so I don't buy into this whole kind of, you know, well, it's the world, it's it's government, it's got to keep. No, we, we got to be in that kind of stuff. We got to fight. I mean, how do you be salt of the earth and not be in the world and doing that kind of stuff? You know? You're just letting sinners just destroy themselves. Like, that's what it says. They are robbing their own lives. Don't you feel bad for them? I do. But a lot of Christians are like, well, I'm saved, so... And they're evil. So I'm just going to stay over here and just ignore them. Um, yeah, don't be enticed by them. But you don't hate them, right? It doesn't say, uh, don't be enticed by them, and then turn around and just hate them, and then let them kill themselves, right? So, gotta be careful, because when it says, you know, in in the in the letters that you're not to have, if there's a false teacher, you're not to have anything to do with them. It doesn't mean you don't reach out to them. It doesn't mean you don't fight to bring the gospel to them. It just means that you don't link arms with them. You know, you're not going to unequally yoke yourself with them. So we got to be careful that we don't uh, mess that up because we're called to reach out to them still. But we know that the world and the devil are out to entice us to sin, and we do not consent. We will not consent. And that should be on every level. Like, my family will not consent to your evil. I will not consent. And remember what we said about consent. Right? Let's go back to what I said. Consent means agreement. So I'm not going to agree with you. I disagree with your worldview. I disagree with your laws that you've created. I disagree with those things. And I'm going to choose not to do that. I'm going to make this choice because I can make the choice. I can choose not to follow along with you. So I do not consent in that way. And I will not give away my right to withhold. I'm not going to give away my right to withhold. I'm not going to give it away. I'm withholding my family from you. I'm withholding my money from you. I'm withholding my time from you. I have the right to do that. I have a choice to make. And I'm making the choice not to be enticed by sinners. Second one. It is said that the temptation is not too strong, but the tempted are too weak. Let me say it again. It is said that the temptation is not too strong, but that the tempted are too weak. 
We must be watchful and pray. Why are we so weak? Why are we weak when it comes to sin? Right? You think about that. Why do I why do I fall? Why am I enticed by these sins? What's the matter with me? You know, what why why do I keep falling into this sin all the time? And that's a great question. It's a question we should ask. Like, why why am I doing this? <laughs> Well, in Ephesians chapter 6, we have the armor of God, right? Put on all the armor. This what says, if you're going to stand against the temptations, against the enticement of sinners from the arrows of the devil, you have to put on the armor of God. And then in verse 18, it says, praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and on supplication. To that end, keep alert with all prayer perseverance, making supplication for the all the saints. And also for me, Paul says, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am ambassador and change, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. And so there we go. We need to apply that to ourselves. So the problem is that the temptation is not too strong. It's that we're weak. Temptation is common to all people. It's common temptations. Nothing new under the sun. The problem is that you're weak. Why are you weak? Because you're not doing what Ephesians 6. You're not, you don't have the full armor of God on. You're not praying at all times with all prayer and supplication. And you're not keeping alert with perseverance. You're not making, maybe you're not making supplication for saints. You're missing something there. And you're not praying for the opportunity. You know, you're an ambassador too. But you need to boldly declare. Maybe you're not doing that. Maybe you don't have the opportunity right now, and maybe you need to make the opportunity so that you can boldly declare what God is doing. And so you need to arm yourself. Arm up. Gird yourself like a man. <laughs> as, as as God says to Job, you know, gird up your loins. Let's go. Time for action. Um... As Paul says to First Corinthians, into the Corinthians, um, you know, act like men. Come on, time to go. It's you're in the fight. This is a battle. This is a war. There's enticement coming. There's a path that you can walk down that will lead you to death, to destruction, to taking of your own life. Really, do you want to go down that, or do you want to stay away from that? Make the choice. Make the choice now. Before you even go that that one, if that path is open and someone says, "Hey, come on, throw in with us," it's cool. It'll be great. You're gonna get all kinds of great stuff. Say, "Nope, not gonna do that. I will not consent to sinners." So that's our study for this week. Gotta apply it to yourself, man. Gotta gotta. It's coming. That path is before you. Are you gonna take it or are you gonna stay away from it? So apply it to yourself, and um. Live it out. Make that choice. Say, nope, not gonna, I'm not going down that path. I'm not even going to put my foot in that direction. I'm going over here. Path of righteousness. So that's the end of our study this week. Come back next time. We'll continue on in the book of Proverbs. <laughs>